Hey there, geometry friends. Today we are going to do a lesson on simplifying radicals. So there's going to be a lot of numerical manipulation, some algebra manipulation here. Um, so you're going to put your number hat on and kind of, kind of take your geometry hat off for a little bit here. So when we simplify radicals, what the heck is a radical? Well, a radical is that thing that looks like a square root. Okay, a square root is one kind of radical. There are other ones too, cube roots, fourth roots, and things like that. But when I say radical, for the most part, we're going to mean the square root. Now, if I'm dealing with square roots, square roots are the opposite of squares. So we really need to know our perfect squares for these lessons to go well. So the first thing we're going to do is go through and find them. So if I have 1 squared, that's 1 times 1, which is 1. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 squared means 3 times 3. That's 9, 16. 5 times 5 is 25, 6 times 6 is 36, 7 times 7, or 7 squared is 49, 8 squared is 64, 9 squared is 81, 100, 121, and 144. You need to be able to identify those perfect uh, squares when you see them or think about them when asked. So make sure you know the list of numbers that's right there. Um, what is another name for the products? We call them perfect squares. So all those numbers up there on the bottom row are perfect squares. Now, you can have perfect squares for numbers. You can also have perfect squares for variables. So x times x is 2x's multiplied together. That's x squared. And technically, you can square anything you want by multiplying it by itself. So what if instead of x times x, I did x squared times x squared? Well, you may remember from last year, when you multiply like bases, x squared times x squared, you add the exponents. So that's going to come x to the fourth. x cubed times x cubed, if I add those exponents, that's x to the sixth. x to the fourth times x to the fourth. 4 plus 4 is 8. And x to the fifth times x to the fifth would be x to the tenth. So if you have a perfect square variable, you will notice that all of these have even exponents. So if you have an even exponent, that means you have a perfect squared variable. All right. This video camera is really close to my face. I'll back it up. All right. Uh, so now, what about if you square root one of those? Well, if I square root x squared, square rooting just means what times itself equals the thing you have. So if I take the square root of x squared, that's x, because x times x equals x squared. What's the square root of x to the fourth? Well, what times itself equaled x to the fourth? That was here. The answer was x squared times itself equals x to the fourth. And what multiplied by itself is x to the sixth? x cubed. And you'll notice, wait a second, when I square root a variable with an even power, 2 became 1, 4 became 2, 6 became 3, what did we do with that exponent when we square rooted it? We multiplied it by a half, or we divided it by 2. You're right. We divided those by 2. So when square rooting x to a number, you divide the exponent by 2. Okay? And that is what we do. So then it says simplify the square root of each perfect square. Okay? So what's the square root of 9? What times itself is 9? That's 3. What times itself is 25? Well, that's 5. Now, what times itself is 64x squared? You're just going to look at the number and the letter independently. The square root of 64 is 8. The square root of x squared is x. 121x to the 10th. Well, the square root of 121 is 11. And the square root of x to the 10th, what do we do again? Oh, yeah, when you square root, you divide the even exponents by 2. So x to the 10th divided by 2 is x to the fifth. I shouldn't say x to the tenth divided by two. The square root of x to the tenth is like dividing the ten by two. That's what I should have said. Oh no, there's more letters. 
It's the same rule. Square root of 81, 9. Square root of x to the 6th cuts the exponent in half. Square root of y squared cuts the exponent in half. And you can write that as y to the 1 or just y. Doesn't matter. Square root of 49, x to the 8th, y to the 20th. All right, well, 49 square rooted, 7. x to the 8th, cut it in half. y to the 20th, cut it in half. Do you see a pattern here? 225. What times itself is 225? If you don't remember, you can use your calculator. So let me pull up my calculator. And that'll come up in the background. Um, so the square root of 225 is 15, but I'm going to use the calculator later, so I'll keep it loading in the background here. So square root of 225 is 15. Square root of x to the fourth is going to be x squared. Square root of y to the twelfth is going to be y to the sixth. And z to the 1,000. Oh, no, it's a big number. I don't care. I still divide it by 2. 1,000 divided by 2. Is 500. Well, what do I do if I have a square root on a fraction? I just do the top and the bottom separately. So that's really the square root of 16 over the square root of x to the 14th. So that's going to be 4 over x to the 7th. Let's see, does the calculator work? It does. All right, so we'll use that a little bit later. What do we have next? Well, that was pretty easy because everything we were dealing with was a perfect square. What if it's not a perfect square? Yeah, that's okay. What we do is we say, if you have a non-perfect square, break it up into a perfect square times something else, okay? Now there's an example up there, but I'm just gonna do these live, all right? So if I come down here and I'm supposed to simplify the following, the square root of 32, I would wanna find the biggest perfect square that's a factor of 32. And you can do that in your calculator, if you'd like, by going into your calculator, going to the graph part of your calculator, um, and I am going to type 32 divided by x, and put that in the function, and then I'm going to look at the table. So I'm going to hit Control-T to bring up the table, and then I'm going to scroll down on the right-hand side until I see the biggest perfect square. 32, not a perfect square. 16, that is a perfect square. So 16, I should show you again, 16 was next to 2, so that means 32 is 2 times 16. And you're going to put the square first and the non-square second. So the square root of 32 is the same as the square root of 16 times the square root of 2. And the square root of 16 is a nice number. It's 4. The square root of 2 is not a nice number. So we're going to leave it like that. And that is considered simplifying the radical. Now, I'm going to do a very Mrs. Vibber thing, and I'm going to get up on my soapbox and say, Mrs. Vibber, why the heck do we care? Why can't I just leave it as radical 32? The radical still sticks around, so it's not like I changed it. Square root of 25 is 5? Yeah, it makes sense. But, but why do this? And my answer is because sometimes it's helpful, but also sometimes it's not. So let me explain something to you. Square root of 32 is equal to 4 root 2 because if I went back to the calculator, back to the regular calculator thing, and I did square root of 32, that as a decimal is 5.656. If I did 4 root 2, I also get 5.65865. I, I get the same thing. So I at least know they're equivalent. But if they're the same, why do I write them this way? Couple reasons. Number one, let's say I had to keep working with this number over and over again. 32 is kind of a big number. 4 and 2 are baby numbers. I would much rather work with a 4 and a 2 over and over and over again than a 32 over and over and over again. But I got to be honest, there's a lot of reasons that I like the square root of 32 better because if I was trying to estimate it, I would say, well, the square root of 32, 32 is between 25 and 36. 
So the square root of 32 is somewhere between 5 and 6. It's probably going to be like 5.6 or 5.7 if I try to do that in my head. So if somebody said, hey, Mrs. Viver, estimate radical 32, I'd say, well, like 5 and a half. If somebody said, hey, Mrs. Viver, estimate 4 root 2, I'd have to sit in there and go, um, yeah, I don't know what a good decimal estimation is. So are there times where leaving it alone is okay? Sure, because it's great to estimate. But there are more times where it's nice to simplify it because then you have smaller numbers to work with. All right, so moving on. I know this video is kind of a long one, but I really wanted to make sure that you kind of heard my words um, and the things that I want to talk about rather than just the rules. So let's go back. Square root of 500. So I'm going to go back into the calculator and figure out what's the biggest perfect square that goes into 500. So I am going to go back to this. And now let's see if I can remember. Let's see. Square root of 500. So I'm going to do 500 divided by x. And then I'm going to look at the table and find a big perfect square. 500 is not a perfect square. 250 is not a perfect square. Ooh, but 100 is. 100 is a perfect square. That's 10 times 10. So 500 is 5 times 100. And I'm going to write it as 100 times 5. We want the perfect square to go in front. And the square root of 100 is 10. Radical 5. Okay. Now, what about 24x cubed? Well, I'm just going to do this, the number part. And then the letter part. So I'm going to rewrite this as radical 24. I'm going to rewrite that as radical x cubed, and I'm going to deal with them independently. So what perfect square goes into 24? Well, 24 is 24 times 1. Neither of those are perfect squares. Uh, 2 times 12? Nope. 3 times 8? Nope. 4 times 6? Four. 4 is a perfect square. So I'm going to rewrite this as 4 times 6. And then x to the third isn't even, so I can't divide it by 2. But I can say x to the third is really x squared times x. Okay, x squared times x. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 6 is some number I don't know. The square root of x squared is x. And then this is a radical x. And now I'm going to use the commutative property of multiplication to rearrange this so I have all the non-square rooted stuff together and all the square rooted stuff together. So 2 times x is 2x. Root 6 times root x is root 6x. So the square root of 24x cubed can also be written as 2x times radical 6x. Okie dokie. So let's try another one. Now, there are a bunch on this page here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one more, then pause the video, and I want you to try the other ones, and then come back and you can check your answer, okay? So let's do one more together. Square root of 125x to the fourth. Well, what perfect square goes into 125? Let's see. So if I did 125 divided by x, my table, 125, 62, 31. Ooh, 25. 125 is 25 times 5. So that's 25 times 5. And x to the fourth is already a perfect square because it's even. So I'm going to leave it alone. 25 square rooted becomes 5. So this is 5 root 5. And x to the fourth, when you square root an even exponent, it just gets cut in half. So this is 5x squared radical 5. So this is equivalent to that. All right, like I said, this video is getting kind of long, so I'm going to pause it. I'm going to do EFGHI, and then I'm going to unpause my end. So in a second, these are all going to magically show up. You should pause it on your end and try these, and then compare yours to mine. So, ready for a pause here. Hold on. Do, do, do. And. Okay, here we go. I am going to go through these quickly. All right, so you should have done these already. I'm going through them quickly. So, I'm going to break this up into 40x squared and y to the fifth. 
Now I'm going to try to pull out perfect squares. 40 is 4 times 10. X squared is already a perfect square because it's even. And Y to the fifth is Y to the fourth times Y. Whenever you have an odd, you're going to have one Y and then however much else was the even to make it add up to the right exponent. Square root of 4 is 2, radical 10. Square root of X squared is X. Square root of Y to the fourth is Y squared. And then this radical Y stays. So everybody outside the radical comes in front. Everybody inside the radical gets multiplied together. And this is 2XY squared, radical 10Y. F. The 3 stays out there. 45, X to the 7th. Now I'm going to find my perfect squares. 45 is 9 times 5. X to the 7th is X to the 6th and an extra X. The square root of 9 is 3. Radical 5 is itself. X to the 6th becomes X cubed. And that root X stays. 3 times 3 is 9X cubed root 5X. Again, I know I'm going fast, but it's because you should have done these already and I'm just catching up. X, radical 16X squared. Well, the X comes out in front. The radical 16 is there. The X squared is there. Square root of 16 is 4. Square root of X squared is X to the first. X times 4 times X is... 4x squared. The 1 half stays. The 200 and the x to the fifth get separated. 200 is 100 times 2. x to the fifth is x to the fourth times x. So I have the square root of 100, which is 10. Radical 2 is yucky, so it stays. The square root of x to the fourth is x squared. The square root of x stays. 1 half of 10 is 5x squared root 2x. And last but not least, I have 2x times the square root of 80 times the square root of y to the 11th. All right, so 80. 80 is 1 times 80, not a perfect square. 2 times 40, nope, no perfect square is 3. 4 times 20, nope. 5 times 16. Ooh, 16 is a perfect square. So that's going to be 16 times 5. And y to the 11th is y to the 10th times y. So I have 2x. The square root of 16 is 4. The square root of 5 is, you know, just the square root of 5. Square root of y to the 10th becomes y to the 5th. And that radical y stays. 2 times 4 is 8, and I have an x and a y to the 5th. 5 times y is 5y. All right, lots of algebra and arithmetic in these. So you're taking your geometry hat off, putting your algebra hat back on. Uh, so what you need to do now is do some homework practice here. If you need help, you can scan the QR code, and it'll take you to a website that should help you with it if you need help. So good luck, everybody. I hope you think it makes sense, and I hope you have a radical day. <laughs> I know, I should quit while I'm ahead instead of quitting while I'm behind in bad jokes. Have a good one, everybody.